Hi everyone, I'm Erin Hagen, Licensed Clinical Social Worker and Coordinator with the Youth and Family Services Division with the City of Norwich. I wanted to make this video for all my fellow city employees because you've been on my minds a lot in the past couple weeks and I wanted to talk about the importance of self-care. I know we're all experiencing varying degrees of stress, worry, and confusion due to COVID-19 and we don't know how this is going to impact us personally or professionally as the days pass. So what we can control right now is how we take care of ourselves. And self-care is something that I talk a lot about with my employees and with the clients that we work with. And I wanted to share some tips and resources with all of you um, to maybe help you along your way as we deal with this crisis together. So Self-care is actually a term that came about in the 1950s. It was a medical term that they used for patients who were hospitalized um, in order to help build their self-esteem. And it referred to things like exercise and personal hygiene, which are still things that people can do for self-care today. Um, the term has really evolved into any deliberate action that we take to improve our mental, emotional, and physical health. And for everybody, that's different. We all have different things that help us relax or help us feel rejuvenated. So I'm just going to share a few simple tips with you that may work for you and um, that you can give a shot. So the first one is um, small accomplishments, setting small goals in the morning. And I'm going to speak specifically to maybe setting a goal to make your bed every day. Now, that would be important because it's something you can do. It only takes two to three minutes, and it's a small accomplishment that starts you off on the right foot of achieving a goal in the morning, which builds self-esteem and maybe will motivate you for achieving smaller goals or even bigger goals throughout the day. Um, it's also nice to have an already made bed, um, but if that's not for you, that's okay. You can set other small goals. Um, maybe that you're going to get up and change out of your pajamas today. That is maybe a goal that is reasonable during these times where some of us are working from home or not able to work because of the governor's orders or other health concerns. So it's just the idea that if you set one small accomplishment goal in the morning and you achieve it, you might be off to a good start. So another tip that I wanna share with you is about mindfulness. So mindfulness is another term that's used very frequently. And mindfulness really refers to anything you can do in the moment to ground you and center you in the here and now and the present and get you kind of out of your thought process. So sometimes we can get caught up in anxious worry and um, negative self-talk or negative thoughts. And when you do a mindfulness activity, it brings you out of your mind and into the present moment where you're at. And so one that I really like to do is called the five senses. And it's just that. It's um, getting you to connect with your five senses in the environment that you're in and so I'm going to do it real quick with you just so you can get an idea of how quick and easy this can be. So I invite you to just close your eyes really quick and take one very big deep breath and I'm going to do it with you. And then when you open your eyes, take a look at the room around you and start to identify and list in your mind or out loud five things that you can see. So maybe you wanna pick things that aren't obvious, things that you don't typically notice. So as you're looking around the room, just list these five things that you see. And next, I'm gonna ask you to identify four things that you can touch. Now this can be the feeling of the clothes on your body, it could be a chair or a table next to you, but just take a moment to feel the texture of those items. Now thirdly, I'm going to ask you to pay attention to three things you can hear. And maybe not things that are always so obvious. Maybe it's the birds chirping outside or an appliance humming in the next room. Next, I want you to identify two things that you smell. Again, these could be things that you don't typically stand out to you. They could be pleasant or unpleasant. And then lastly, one thing that you can taste. 
And you can take a sip of a drink if you want or chew a piece of gum if it's nearby. Or you can just notice the taste that's in your mouth right now. And that's it. Just that simple tool gives you um, less than one minute of time to get out of thoughts and worry and get you focused on where you are in the moment. And you can do a mindfulness technique basically with anything in life, Um, even eating. When you're eating dinner, taking a moment to take a breath in between each bite and really savor the texture and taste of the foods that you're eating. You can be very mindful when you're going for a walk by paying attention to the the noises and the things that you see. So there's ways that you can use that five minute, I mean that five senses activity in just your day to day um, environment and life. And so I really encourage you to try to practice mindfulness in something that you do today. So lastly, I want to talk about self-care in terms of exercise. And mainly because a lot of times we get overwhelmed with the idea of exercise. If you're not already in an exercise routine, the idea of doing a 30-minute workout or a yoga class is can be very overwhelming and what happens is if we think something is too hard or too long then that all or nothing thinking kind of leads us to not even trying and so I had a term that was introduced to me it was called the irreducible minimum and essentially what that is is you pick a number um, for me I, I usually pick five or ten um, and and set that as your goal so maybe I'm gonna just do five sit-ups and five squats today and or five minutes of walking and then that's your goal and that's what you do and if you happen to do a little bit more then that's great if you only do the five then that's awesome too and if you don't do it at all that's also okay if you just try again the next day but in doing it if you do the five every day it seems more manageable and then maybe the next day you can enlarge that number or not you can keep it the same but just five reps or five minutes will help improve your mental and physical well-being you can also try this with a task or um, like completing a project or cleaning the house set a timer for five minutes and just know that you're going to do it for that five minutes and again if you do it for longer great if not you're five minutes closer to a cleaner house and a completed task so that's just a little tip and an idea to set some kind of manageable achievable goal that doesn't make you feel overwhelmed and we have enough feeling of overwhelmed right now so it's really about setting little small goals and i i challenge you to try a self-care activity every day, even just for two or three minutes. And it doesn't have to be the ones that I mentioned. Like I said, the list can go on for self-care, taking a bath, going for a walk, FaceTiming a friend, tinkering in the garage, in the garden. The, The list is just endless. It's just something that you enjoy doing that also relaxes your mind and your body. Uh, There's lots of videos on YouTube. Um, You can literally search five minute workout on YouTube and and they'll have them or five minute guided meditation or five minute mindfulness activity. And there's lots and lots of resources online for you to do that. So I do challenge you to try to get in some self care every day while we work through um, this time that we're in in our lives and and share them with me um you know my email is listed in the in the city it's ehagen at cityofnorwich.org and let me know what self-care activities you're doing and if they're working or if you have questions or want other tips i'd be happy to talk with you and um, maybe even start a self-care email group where we can all email each other and give each other ideas and and share them with one another I do want to say, though, that sometimes with everything that's going on, it can become so overwhelming that it's hard to take care of ourselves. And if you find that you're having more difficult days than manageable ones, don't forget that we have the Employee Assistance Program. It is a resource available to us for free. And all of the behavioral health consultants that are working through our EAP program are doing telehealth sessions. And telehealth is simply a video like this, a video chat. Um, The person will be right there talking back with you live. And it does feel like that could seem awkward at first because you're not in the same room with someone, but I have been using it with um, kids and families that we work with. And once you get over that initial um, discomfort of doing something new, it really is 
um, beneficial and helpful. So I do encourage you to reach out if you need it. Um, also, follow us on Facebook at Norwich Youth and Family Services and check out our page on the city website because we are posting um, links and resources almost daily, not just for you, but for things that you can do with your family as well. So um, thank you for giving your time to watching this video, and I hope that it helped. And we will get through this, and I hope to see you all soon. Thanks. Bye.